says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Good evening from the First Baptist Church of Bemis. I hope that you have had a good Wednesday. It has been a little cooler this week. I think it's because the Lord really wants us to look forward to summer, warmer weather. I am looking forward to warmer weather. Again, thank you for the privilege of allowing us, the ministry of First Baptist Church, to come into your home. And again, I thank you for the privilege of being able to share with you many wonderful truths from God's Holy Word. When we finish on Wednesday, I look forward to the Thursday and Friday of preparing for the next Wednesday because you are very important to the Lord, and God's Word has a message for you each and every Wednesday. Tonight, we want to talk about a very important subject, and it's how we consider life. And tonight, we're turning to a minor prophet by the name of Haggai. And we want to read God's Word tonight. I want to give you just a few minutes to find that precious prophet that minor prophet Haggai. So go ahead and be finding Haggai chapter 1, and we're going to be reading Haggai chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. I hope you have some uh, paper, pencil, or pen there as we have our Bible study tonight. While you're finding the book of Haggai, let me encourage you to join us on Sunday morning, whether you're with us in person or watching on YouTube. Uh, just remember that these are all uh, opportunities for you to grow in the Lord and study God's Word. And so tonight, the title of our message or our Bible study tonight is Continually Consider. And that is a good spiritual habit to do. Uh, consider is one thing, but to continually consider, uh, that's another different ball game in itself. So tonight, you have Haggai close by. It's on the screen. But Haggai chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. And the Bible says, In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord to Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, that's the governor, there of Jerusalem, and then to the high priest Joshua, saying, verse 2, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, or God's people, were saying to the Lord and to Haggai, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Verse 3, Then the word of the Lord came by the prophet Haggai, saying, verse 4, is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your paneled houses, and this house, the temple, lie in waste? Verse 5, this is our first time that this phrase is repeatedly mentioned throughout uh, this book in Haggai. Consider your ways. Think about what you're doing. Verse 6, Haggai said, you have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And you earneth wages, but you have little when you put in your purse. Your purse has holes in it. And then verse 7, here it comes again. Haggai the prophet said, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways or think about what you're doing. Now, we all need to do that. I need to do that. You need to do that. We need to do that individually. We need to do that collectively. Think about what we are doing. Consider carefully what we're doing. Now, before we begin our Bible study tonight, I'd like to have a word of prayer with you and ask the Lord to open up our mind and heart so that we can receive the Word of God. You know, Haggai is a very prominent book, and I hope and pray that we'll be able to absorb what God is saying to us through this wonderful prophet. Let's pray together, shall we? Thank you. 
Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this good Wednesday evening. Father, we thank you for the privilege of being able to come into the homes of those who are watching tonight. And Lord, I pray that you will give them a fresh word, a hopeful word, an encouraging word, a word, Father, that they can stand on, a word they can live on, a, a word, Father, that they know will see them, Father, uh, through the different seasons in their life. Father, help us to consider spiritual matters every day in our life. Father, help us to place you first. And when we place you first, everything else will fall in order. Lord, we love you. And Father, we also pray, Lord, for those who are watching tonight who do not know you as Lord and Savior. I pray that this media ministry will reach out to those and follow those who are lost tonight on their knees. They'll say, oh, Lord Jesus, I give you my heart. I give you my life. And Father, for those tonight who are watching, who have such a heavy burden, I pray, Father, they'll lay that burden at the foot of the cross. Father, thank you for this Bible study. Thank you for those who are watching. In Christ's name I pray. And amen. Well, thank you. I read a story about a time management expert. Somebody who would come from place to place, people to people, business to business, and share about effective ways of using your time. Well, this time management expert came to a college one day and spoke to a specific business class. As he began to speak, he held up a jar, like I'm holding up, like you see this evening, and he began to demonstrate a valuable lesson about this jar. May I share it with you? Here it goes. The time expert took several fist-sized rocks and began to fill it in this jar all the way to the top. And he asked the question, is the jar filled? And one gentleman there on the second row said, oh yes, it is filled. And before the time management expert could respond, he took a bucket of gravel and began filling the jar with the gravel. And you could see the gravel going down into the jar. He asked the question, is the jar filled? Nobody answered. So the next thing he did, he took a bucket of sand and filled the jar with a bucket of sand. And you could see the sand going uh, through the gravel and going to the rocks and going to the bottom. He asked the question, is the jar filled? Nobody answered. Then the time expert took a bucket of water and began to fill the jar with as much water that the jar could hold. And you could see the water going through the gravel, going through the sand, going by these fist-sized rocks. And then he asked the question, what's the purpose of this illustration? Well, uh, one gentleman held his hand up and said this, you can always find more room on your schedule for things. He thought for a moment and the time expert thought, well, that has value, but that's not the purpose of the illustration. The illustration, the purpose of the illustration was this. If you first don't fit the fist-sized rocks into the jar, you'll not be able to fit them in later. For you see, if you fit, fill the jar with water and sand and gravel, you'll not be able to fit fist-sized rocks into the jar. And he said, in life, we all have fist-sized rocks, the major rocks, rocks that are important, rocks that are valuable to us. And if we don't put them in first, other things such as gravel and sand and water will fill our life so that we're unable, not able to fit 
the fist size rocks into our schedule. Well, I want to leave that on my desk because the Lord God has placed in all of us the opportunity to fill our lives with fist size rocks, such as God, the Bible, church, family, our faith, witnessing, Bible study, meditating. If we don't fit those valuable things in our life, gravel, rocks, uh, sand, it'll fill our life and there'll be no room for God and for Bible and for church. And so when I read that, my mind went to the book of Haggai. Now Haggai is a minor prophet. There are 12 minor prophets in the Old Testament, and Haggai is the 10th of the 12. Now here is the history lesson, and I'll say much more about this in point one. The Jews were allowed under King Cyrus to go from Babylon back to Jerusalem, and there were only 50,000 that he allowed to go. Many will call that the remnant. So there were 50,000 Jews going back to Jerusalem to do what? Rebuild the temple. Well, as they were preparing to rebuild the temple, opposition came from King Artaxerxes and from the Samaritans, and the work of the temple just halted. Well, in 520, the prophet Haggai heard about this, and the Prophet Haggai said, you must go back to work because this was very important in the life of the Jews. You see, the temple represented the very presence and power of God. So there are five times in this little book, not little by uh, value, but little in uh, chapters and verses that Haggai said, think about what you're doing. Think about the value that you are saying to yourself and to God when you halt the work of rebuilding the temple. He says, consider what you're doing. So tonight, I want to talk to you tonight about three biblical insights when we have godly consideration. Now, every day, the Lord places things that we need to consider. The first thing I want to share with you tonight is this. I want to talk to you tonight about the consideration of our time, the godly consideration of our time. Do you know that time means everything to us? Now, the question is, do we use our time valuable and to the glory of God. Now, the history lesson that I gave just a minute ago, I want to broaden it, and maybe you'll see why. In 538, King Cyrus of Persia gave the Jews the opportunity to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple, and there were only 50,000 that could go back. So we go from 538, well, in 538, uh, 536 B.C., uh, Zerubbabel began the work of rebuilding the temple. But from 536 to 534, the work of the temple stopped. It stopped because of opposition. Uh, King uh, Artaxerxes uh, put the pressure on the Jews. The Samaritans put the pressure on the Jews. So from 534 to 520, watch this, 14 long, sad years went by that the Jews who King uh, Cyrus allowed to go back, they said the opposition's too strong, we're not going to rebuild the temple, and for 14 long years, the presence of God there back in Jerusalem left unattended. So can you imagine for 14 years, the beautiful, oh, the beautiful temple uh, that had once uh, stood tall there in Jerusalem. It 
looked in shambles. It was horrible. You didn't want to look at it. But for 14 years, the people of God said, we're not going to rebuild it because they listened to the voice of opposition rather than listening to the voice of God. So in 520, Haggai the prophet went back to the children, the remnant of God and said, consider what you're doing. Consider what you're doing. So keep your Bible open. In Haggai 1, 2, Haggai uh, heard the people say the time is not come. Notice the delay. Now think about it. For 14 years, they did not lift up tool. They did not lift up their hands. They did not put their back to go to work. They just allowed excuse after excuse after excuse to pass by. They were allowing other things to fill their life, like gravel, sand, and water, and the major rocks they did not put in their life. It was a delay. But not only notice the delay from the people, but notice the doubt from the people. Now, remember this. How long will the children of Israel in Babylon? 40, 50, 60, 70 years they were in Babylon. Now, here's the question. Who took care of the children of Israel while they were in Babylon? <laughs> Uh, certainly it wasn't the Babylonians. It was who? God. God took care of them for 70 years there in Babylon. But when uh, uh, the king allowed them to go back to Babylon, to back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple, guess what? They forgot all of that. They doubted that God would equip them, that God would empower them, that God would help engage with them to do the work of God. Now think about it. Today, well, every day, there are no more, there are no less, there are 1,440 minutes per day. God's given us that to do the work that God's called us to do. Someone has said that time has no resurrection. That's right. When Wednesday's over, Wednesday's over. When Thursday's over, Thursday's is up. Thursday is over. I can't go back to 2020, 2019, 2018. I can't go back to when I was 11 and 21 and 31. When time is over, time is over. And that's what Haggai was saying to the people there in Jerusalem. Time is of the essence. Build the temple. Rebuild this temple. So, first of all, notice the consideration of our time. Secondly, notice the consideration of the temple. With your Bible open, look at Haggai 1.4. Haggai hears the excuse and says, It is time for you, O ye, to dwell in your paneled houses, and this house, the temple, lie in ruins. Haggai heard their excuse of vanity. Haggai noticed that there was a spiritual problem. Now watch this. In Haggai 1.4, Haggai said to these 50,000 Jews, You made time to build your homes, but you could not make time to build or rebuild the temple. You know what I want to do? I just want to, I want to, I want to hang my head. I want to go and hide. Haggai confronts their excuse. You have time to build your nice houses but you have no time to rebuild the temple, what is important to you? Now, the problem was not in rebuilding your home or building your home. I mean, uh, the people needed a place to, to build, but wouldn't it have been a lot easier to say, I'm building my home since I've been gone these 70 years, but I'm also building the house of the Lord. So what do you observe, Pastor? I observe what I call, the, the Jews had what I call a venture of vacillation. What do you mean, Pastor? They wavered. Uh, they exemplified or they displayed a, a means of indecision. I'll, I'll do this, but I won't do that. I'll build my house, but I won't rebuild the temple. You know what that is? That is a venture of vacillation. I'll do this, but I won't do that. 
I'll make a decision to build my house, but I won't make a decision to build the temple. What's the problem, Pastor? The problem is, yes, vacillation, but it's a problem of what? Priority. Uh, priority. Now think about it. 14 years goes by. They're showing indecision. Now, God allowed them to go back and rebuild the temple. God took care of them there in those 70 years of, of Bab Babylonian exile. But when they get back to Jerusalem and they see the temple every day, I look at it, I see it. How could you go by and not do something about it? It's a, it's a feeling of what? Indecision. I'm wavering. Friend, Matthew 6.33 teaches us what? Seek ye second. Oh, you'll never read that. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So I noticed that these people had a venture of vacillation, but I also know that they had a variation of value. In Haggai 1.5, the Bible says, consider your ways. Think about what you're doing. Now, right now, this jar What's important? Gravel, sand, water. If it is, there's no room for the fist-sized rocks. And those fist-sized rocks are a symbol of Bible study and prayer and worship and meditation and, and witnessing for the Lord. So we have to ask ourselves, what's really important to us today? If I go back and look at my calendar, if I go back and look at my time, if I go back and look at 1,400 and so many minutes a day, what's really important? Somebody told me this years ago, and it's really plausible for every life, and that is, if you'll take care of God's business, you'll take care of your business. Amen? Amen. All right, number three. Here's the third biblical insight when we have godly consideration we will consider our time, we will consider the temple, but then we'll also consider our trust. Now, so what are these people to do? Well, I didn't read it, but I, I shall now. In Haggai 1, 7 through 8, let me read. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Now it's Haggai speaking from the Lord. Look at verse 8. Do you see it? Haggai 1.8 says, Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house, or really rebuild the temple. Watch, watch what God says. And I will take pleasure in it, and I'll be glorified in it, saith the Lord. Friends, if I hear that God's going to receive glory in something, guess what? Here are my hands, Lord. Help me to have strength to do it. So, what's the result? Well, if you read in Haggai 1.12, Then Zerubbabel, that's the governor of Jerusalem, said this, With all the remnant of the, of the people, they obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the words of Haggai the prophet as the Lord their God had sent them, and the people did fear before the Lord. Now, if I had a big poster board, this is what I'd do. I'd write 516 B.C. What's that, Pastor? That's the year that the temple was completed. That's the year that the rebuilding of the temple was completed. Four years. Four years. So we've gone from 14 years of vacillation, wavering, indecision, to four years of obedience. And you know what the Bible says about that? God was well pleased in that. Friend, if it took 24 years, God would have been pleased. Why? God saw their work. God saw their work. God saw their labor. You see, there's nothing import, more important in our life than the will of God. There's nothing more important in our life than the worship of God. It's not so much the time that it took, but that they were eager to do the work of God. I read something interesting the other day that I knew, but I didn't know the enormous magnitude of what was happening. Have you ever heard of the phrase garbage 
patches. What did you say, Pastor? Garbage patches? What is this? These are large areas in the ocean where litter and debris, such like fishing gear and uh, fishing nets and other garbage that comes from the rivers that float out to the ocean. The largest garbage patch that we have is between Hawaii and California. This article said that each year there will be one to two million tons of plastic each year. There are really five different patches of garbage patches out there in the ocean. What's the problem? The problem is that there is an abundance of litter coming from rivers that float out to the debris of the ocean that is just filling up and it's getting larger. These patches are getting larger and larger and larger and larger. So you can't just do anything. Well, work is being done to try to uh, take care of this problem. The problem is that if, if delay action is given, marine life could be in serious danger. So what people are doing now, they're trying to survey the cause, trying to find out what can we do so that marine life uh, can be protected. But if they delay in doing something about this, the one to two million tons of garbage each year will go to three, ton, three million tons, five million tons, six million tons. And you know what? It'll get out of hand. If something is not taken care, it'll get out of hand and, and marine life will be in danger. Makes you think, doesn't it? Makes you think. If I do not take care of the excuses that I give to the Lord, one excuse goes to two, two goes to three, three goes to four. And finally, I've got so many excuses that I am engulfed with the excuses of my life. God, through Haggai, told the people of God, consider your ways. Think about what you're doing. Now, as I speak that word to you, I speak it to myself. I speak it to myself. Think about, think about, Bill, what you're doing. Think about what I'm doing with my time. Think about what I'm doing with my relationship with God, my relationship with my family, how I'm witnessing. Think about what I have done today. I can't go back and get dressed again and say, okay, I'm, I'm off to work. It, this day's over. It's over. But you know what? If God should look over the balcony of heaven and give us another day of grace, I can try tomorrow on Thursday to live better for the Lord. So I hope and pray that this uh, little book, not little in meaning, but little or small in chapters, will speak to us that our soul will reverberate with the understanding that God wants us to consider what we're doing every single day. Would you say amen with it? Amen. Well, again, friends, I hope you know my heart. I hope you know how valuable that these Wednesdays are to your pastor. I love sharing the Word of God. I love studying the Word of God. You know, I can read the Word of God over and over and over, and tomorrow I'll look at Haggai 1-2 and go, I didn't see that in there. Uh, that's the richness of God's Word. So again, thank you for letting me come into your home. I want to share this from Numbers Chapter 6, verse 24 and following, and this is my prayer for you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. That's my prayer for you this evening. So again, thank you. Rest well. Have a good evening. And always remember, the Lord Jesus Christ will always hold you and the palm of his hands. Thank you.